Now we explore many different scenarios in which we have controlled sources or control variable equations. This is a complement to the other tutorials on MA we've seen so far. The equations in MA fall in one of three categories. The first one are the control equations, CTL1, CTL2, etc. The second group are the evil branch equations, evil 1, evil 2, evil 3, etc. And the last group are the KCL equations, KCL1, KCL2, and so on and so forth. Today, our attention we will concentrate on the equations of the first group, equations corresponding to variables that control dependent sources, currents and voltages. These equations describe controlling currents or controlling voltages in terms of other m and unknowns. So we will write those v-axis and i-axis those controlling currents or controlling voltages as functions of the voltages in nodes which are unknowns or functions of uh, evil currents in evil branches and even possibly as functions of other control voltages or control currents. That is a plan. That is a control equation. Let's practice on several possible scenarios. This is the purpose of this tutorial. What if? The first case is one in which we have a current controlled current source. This current source depends on Ix, which is the current in this 5 ohm resistor. Let's write the controlling equation for Ix, for this Ix, this controlling current. In this case, the controlling current is simply the current in an RV branch. Observe. So we can write Ix as a function of the voltage in V1 and the voltage in 3, like this. Ix is V1 minus V3 plus 10 volts divided by 5 ohms, and that is our CTL1 in this case. Case 2. In this case, the current Ix, the controlling current Ix, is a current in the same RV branch, but pointing the other way. Well, that current is the current in an RV branch, the controlling current I axis, the current in an RV branch, and we know how to write it as a function of the node voltages V3 and V1. I axis V3 minus V1 minus 10 divided by 5 ohms. V3 minus V1 minus 10 divided by 5 ohms. That would be our CTL1 equation. Case 3. The controlling current Ix is the current in this 7 ohm resistor. In this case, the controlling current is simply the current in an R branch. This is an R branch. So that current can be written as V2 minus V of the reference, 0, divided by 7 ohms. 7 ohms. And that is your controlling equation 1. Case 4. Well, the current source depends on this current Ix, which is the current in an R branch. That current Ix equation is V of the reference minus V of node 2 divided by 7. That is your equation. Case 5. In case 5, the controlling current happens to be an evil current. You say, an evil current? Yes, the control current is an evil current as well. 
but that means that there is no equation to represent ix. We say, well, that means that actually ix is just this ix. Yes, but that is no equation at all. The good news, we do not need a control equation for ix in this case, because the control current ix is not a new unknown Ix is not a new unknown. Ix is a naval current K6. In this case, let's say that the current controlling this current source is the current in this I branch. You say that is not I branch, that is an R I branch. Well, what is really the difference? The control current is a current in an I branch, which is very nice. The equation for Ix is simply Ix is negative 5. Ix is negative 5. That means that this current is, is negative 20 amps. K7. Well, the controlling current happens to be this, which is the current in an I branch again. Well, that current is just 5 amps. That is your controlling equation, Ix is 5, and this current would be 20 amps. Case 8. The controlling current now is the current on this 6 ohm resistor here at the bottom. Well, that current happens to be the control current is just the current in an RV branch because this is an RV branch regardless that the V is a square source. It doesn't matter. It's still an RV branch. That current is V2 origin minus V1 the destination minus 5VX divided by 6. V2 minus V1 minus 5VX divided by 6 ohms and that is the control equation number one. Observe that we've written the control current Ix in terms of two node voltages and one other control variable, Vx. Case 9. Same as before, but now the current is pointing to the right. So this current is four times this current flowing to the right through the 6 ohm resistor. The control equation in this case is Ix is V1 minus V2 plus 5 Vx divided by 6 ohms. Case 9. The current is the current through this 7 ohm resistor on the top, that is the current in this RV branch. The current, the control current, is a current in an RV branch. And that current, we know what it is, written like that, is V3 minus V2 plus 3 volts divided by 7 plus 2. That is our control current. What if the current that controls this current source is chosen to be the current in the same branch like so? You say, wow, that is weird. But let's see what this signifies. What is this current Ix? This current Ix is a current in an I branch. So this current is negative for Ix. So Ix is equal to negative for Ix. But that signifies that that current is zero is the solution to this equation. Well, we got that the current in this branch, in this case, is permanently zero. Case 12. What if, in the same case as before, someone said, hey, wait a minute, this current is here. I see a V, I see an R, and then I write this current as V3 minus V2 minus 15 volts divided by 3. If you do that, you would be wrong, because you would be assuming that the voltage in this current source is zero. And if you say that, you have a huge conceptual error 
and the whole question is worth nothing. Remember, we cannot assume that the voltage is zero, so this equation is wrong in this, this branch. That is valid only on an RV branch, and this is not an RV branch. It has a current source in it. Case 13. In this case, now we worry about a voltage as a controlling variable. This voltage source, 5VX, depends on the voltage in this 7 ohm resistor. Let's write VX as a function of neural voltages, etc., etc. What is really VX? Well, the voltage in any resistor is just if you use Ohm's law R times I. So this voltage is this current flowing to the left times 7 ohms. 7 ohms times the current flowing through the left. And we know that current flowing through the left. That current is the current in an R branch. That current is V2 minus 0 divided by 7. So we say that voltage is 7 ohms times the current flowing from high to low according to the definition of Vx. That current is V2 minus V reference divided by 7 ohms. And that is our control equation for this voltage Vx. Of course, you choose the direction for the current so that it flows from the plus to the minus of the chosen Vx, right? Right. Case 14. Let's say that this voltage-controlled voltage source depends on the voltage on this resistor of 2 ohms up here. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine. Again, we use Ohm's law. That voltage is the current flowing from high to low times 2 ohms. What is the current flowing from plus to minus? That is negative 5 ohms, right? Right, so 2 ohms times negative 5 is that Vx. 2 ohms times negative 5. Because the current needs to be chosen to flow from the assumed positive to the assumed negative of the controlling variable Vx. That's why it's negative 5 amps. What if this controlled voltage source depends on the voltage in this 2 ohm resistor? Again, we use Ohm's law. The voltage in a resistor is Ri. 2 ohms times the current in this branch flowing in this direction from high to low, flowing downwards, you say. Oh, that current downwards is V3 minus V2 plus 3 divided by 9. I multiply that times 2 ohms, and I get Vx like this. 2 ohms times the current flowing from plus to minus, flowing from 3 to 2 through that branch. That is your controlling equation for Vx in this case. Case 16. Hmm. If this voltage source depends on the voltage in this 3 ohm resistor, again we use Ohm's law. Vx is 3 ohms, the resistance, times the current flowing from high to low through the resistor. But that current flowing towards the right like that is the negative of 4 Ix. So we say that voltage Vx is 3 ohms multiplied by negative 4 Ix. And that is your controlling equation. Of course, the current is assumed to be flowing from high to low of the assumed Vx. That's why it is, in this case, the negative of this current source, negative 4ix. Case 17. What if we were to say, hey, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, the voltage here is 3 ohms times the current, and the current in this branch, I know what it is from here to there, V3 minus V2 minus 15 over 3. If you do this, you are absolutely wrong, and you're shooting yourself in the foot because you would be neglecting the voltage in this 4ix current source, right? If you do that, 
treating an eye branch as an RE branch, it is equivalent to saying that the voltage in the current source is zero. You're neglecting that. And doing that is a huge conceptual mistake, and the value of this answer becomes zero. Case 18. Well, in this case, the controlling variable Vx is a voltage in this 6 ohm resistor. We know what to do. We use Ohm's law. 6 ohms times the current that flows from high to low, from the right to the left. This is still an RV branch, and the current flowing to the left is V2 minus V1 minus 5 of X divided by 6. Well, that voltage is that current multiplied by 6 ohms, and that is our equation. That is just the equation that we need. If you want, you can manipulate that a little bit. You move this to this side, and then you divide by 6, and that is your Vx. You don't really need to do any of this with this one. It's sufficient. Your calculator will do the rest.